Digi-Key on NPI. On NPI, brought to you by DigiKey. Hey, Digi DigiKey. This week is Infineon. Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, this week we're looking at Infineon's Easy PD series of chips. Um, this is a chip and an eval board. Uh, called the BCR Plus. I, I, to be honest, I can't remember the exact part number. It's like CY something something. You know, maybe at the end it'll it'll pop up because uh, I linked to the the chip itself. Um, this is a chip that is pre-programmed with firmware that makes it a drop-in replacement for when you want to replace a DC barrel connector with USB Type C. Um, it will request a voltage from five to twenty volts for you. Um, you don't have to do any firmware, you don't have to do any configuration, you don't have to do any I squared C stuff, it just kind of magically works, which is cool. Because um, for like decades, you know, people have been using barrel jack uh, plugs, I'm sure you have like a box of these at home, like every device has a slightly different voltage and a slightly different connector. Um, these wall warts uh, usually come in fixed voltages, although here we have one that has, um, you know, flexible voltages, there's a little red switch you can flick between uh, 3 and 12 volts. Uh, but the problem is, is that there's like so many different voltages and tips. Um, like we have a, you know, tip set and you can have positive or negative polarity. It's like literally there's hundreds of different combinations of voltages, polarities and connectors. And so as an engineer, if you're designing a product that takes in a DC barrel jack, you know, you want to use something that's common off the shelf, but you also don't want to overpay. But also you want to make sure it doesn't get confused with other stuff, but also you want to make sure that it doesn't get damaged if somebody plugs in a slightly wrong thing, um, which is why you end up with like a drawer full of different power adapters. And because the power adapter is made by different companies usually than the product, it doesn't say what it goes to. It's like I have a NICAD or nickel metal hard drive uh, battery charger. It needs three volts, four amps or whatever. And like the battery, um, the charger uses a DC plug and the DC plug doesn't say anywhere what it is. I just have to kind of like magically guess and know. And uh, so this is a common problem for engineers and users. Also, if people lose the adapter or they move to another country. Um, and so they need a new adapter or they break the adapter or the, or the plug gets broken. Um, now you have to supply them a matching adapter, which could be, you know, again, non-trivial if you're not using a, a standard yeah, five volt or nine volt adapter. Totally sucks. So the solution is, um, we want to have N standards, we can have N plus one standards. Uh, now we have USB PD, which is power delivery over USB C, and you usually have an adapter that looks something like this. This is like a laptop or a iPad charger or whatever. It's a, it's a generic USB C adapter. Um, and you can see the output, it can give you 5, 9, 12, 15, or 12 volts. I do have to specify it's or. You only get one voltage out, but you can choose from any of these. Um, and if so, if your product can use any of these voltages, you can just skip over having a DC barrel connector and use a USB type C. The only problem is if you're using USB C and um, if you want five volts out, which is kind of like the standard, you know, held over from micro B, mini B and, and USB A, it's really easy to configure USB C uh, power delivery for five volts. You just put two 5.1K resistors on the two CC lines and you're done. You don't have to do any other configuration or setup. You'll automatically get five volts, one amp or two amps. Um, but what if you want nine volts or 12 volts? Well, that's where this easy PD BCR plus comes in. Um, so this is, it's a pretty cool chip because it's got, you know, this arm cortex inside <coughs> from, from Cypress slash Infineon and it can do all the detection and management, um, and it has um, non-volatile memory, so you can actually pre-program it and configure it for a particular voltage and current, and then like it's fixed in hardware, you don't have to have any external components. Um, usage is pretty simple. Um, it has you know CC1, CC2 pins, power and ground, and then it can control a FET or multiple FETs uh, if you wanna like have total separation between input and output. Um, fault detection, um, and of course, customizable firmware if necessary. It is still an ARM Core uh, Cortex M0 inside. Um, so here's like a usage diagram. This one has like extra FETs, I think, because they're doing like full um, separation between input and output, but I think you can get away with just a single uh, pass FET. 
And um, this also has the D plus D minus lines for back compatible with like the previous, there was previous data line configurable power adapters for like uh, Apple devices and such. Um, you can connect an inter external I squared C device to configure it. Um, usually you'll have to do that once because it saves the settings in non-volatile memory. Um, but also I guess you could pro probably configure it on the fly. And at the bottom, you can see the sync and voltage um, settings. Uh, what's kind of cool about the uh, this chip, the CPUID3176, is that you can set both a VBUS min and VBUS max. So if you have something that can run from 9 or 12 volts, you can set that up to say like, or 9 to 15, you can say, here's the two voltage ranges I can accept. Otherwise, you know, don't, don't underpower me because I'll have an under voltage uh, problem. And in the data sheet, they tell you, you know, all the voltages that you can configure it from 5 to 20, um, which are the standard voltages, and also the amount of current you want. Um, so this uh, chip can request up to 5 amps. Not all USB PD chips can do 5 amps. A lot of them actually top out at 2 uh, because they don't um, have the full, um, like, eMark uh, firmware capability. They don't have, like, the full negotiation. Only thing is, if you're doing five amps, just like make sure that your cable can handle the five amps um, because it's uh, you'll need like thick wires um, so you don't have too much voltage drop. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. As mentioned, there's also legacy charging support. If you don't want legacy charging, just disconnect D minus and D plus. It's not necessary. It's only for this like Apple QCE whatever um, charging stuff. USB PD is what we recommend. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, is it on Cortex with EEPROM inside? So you can, you know, again, configure it over I squared C. You can also just burn new firmware into it. Um, if you need that, it wasn't linked directly from the data sheet, but you probably just have to contact Infineon and they're all, the, um, they'll, they'll make the firmware for you, give you the binary and you can uh, burn it yourself or they'll give you the configuration over I squared C for exactly what you want. What I would recommend is um, picking up the CY4535 Easy PD eval board, which is um, kind of everything you want all in one with like tons of test points. So you can, if you're like, this, will this actually work for my product or design to replace the DC barrel jack? Um, it's really, really easy to use. I've actually got one here. Maybe uh, we can go to the overhead real fast and show it. Um, so you have this like switch here that you can select different voltages. Like I have it set to three. This is connected to USB-C. This part is like an external uh, interface if you want to do I squared C, uh, USB to I squared C conversion. Um, the actual PD stuff is only on this side. And then this is the pass fed. Um, there's just some passives, um, lots of test points. And then if I uh, plug in my multimeter, And I want to measure the okay, can measure the voltage on the terminal blocks. Let's get the right this is negative and this is positive. You'll see I get 12 volts out. And then I can unplug. And I just flip this uh, switch over to uh, number four. And then I plug it in again. And then this time I measure it and it's 15. So I, you know, I have it plugged into my um, laptop power adapter, which can handle up to 20 volts. So, um, you know, flick it again. Now it's um, setting number five. Plug it in. Measure. And I get 20 volts out. So, yeah, that easy. Um, Kind of trivial. No, no firmware to write, no registers to wrangle, no drivers required. Uh, this is just setting the resistor divider. That's it. So pretty easy. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, I think it's like a couple, it's like 30 bucks or something or 40 bucks from DigiKey. Um, it's in stock as well. So yeah, I mean, I just kind of went through this, but you pick which uh, output you want. You plug in a um, valid USB power delivery. Don't forget, it actually has to have the output voltage. If it doesn't supply 20 volts, you can't get 20 volts out of it. And and you measure the output, and there you go. You get 5, 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts. 
So check out this chip. In stock. And uh, also... And it's inexpensive. It's only a dollar, which yeah. is a really, like, it's exactly kind of like the right price. Um, and you get, you know, guaranteed supply from DigiKey, which is just why we're... So here's a question during this segment. Yeah. Um, here it is. Can this chip <laughs> only pass voltage if it's the one requested, not below it? I've seen chips that just pass whatever they get as long as it's below or equal what's requested. I don't feel that's safe. Some devices might break if it's below the rated voltage. Maybe not on computers that use linear regulators, but some switching... Power supply units actually won't work and literally pass higher voltage if the input is not high enough, which is dangerous. I'm thinking about making such an adapter for the M05. Yeah, I think that's the VN min and VN max. I think you can set it so you tell it, like, if you can't give me 15 volts, don't give me 12. Um, which, like, you're right. It is, it's not uncommon for USB PD sinks to sort of just, like, go the next lowest. Um, but, yeah, the next lowest may actually be not good for your device. You don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Okay. Uh, that is this week's on MPI. Okay. Good question. Hi, on MPI.